Hello. Today we're going to learn to interpret solubility curves and look at the data and what it means on solubility graphs. So here we have your typical chart of solubility curves and what we'll notice is that on the y-axis we are measuring grams of solute in 100 grams of water so this chart represents a chart that we will be dissolving the solute in a 100 gram sample of water always. On the bottom we have the x-axis which is the temperature scale in degrees Celsius. Now what we'll notice is there are two types of curves. There's growth curves and those growth curves are all having an upward trend and a growth curve always represents a solid being dissolved. The downward trend, or decay curves, these are always gases that are being dissolved in solution. So let's look at the first question, and the first question says, what mass of ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, will dissolve at 50 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water? So what we're going to do first is we're going to identify the 50 degree line. We're going to run that up to the NH4Cl curve, and when we take that point and run it back towards the solute on the y-axis, we find that 50, to 50 grams of solute will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius if we are using the solid NH4Cl or ammonium chloride. Let's look at the second question. What is less soluble in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius? Would it be sodium nitrate or sodium chloride? So what we do is we go to the 10 degrees Celsius line and we're going to run that line upward and the two curves we're looking at first as the NaCl line which would represent this dot here and then the second is the NaNO3 or sodium nitrate line which would be represented up here at the top of the line and what we notice is that the NaNO3 will have about 80 grams of solute, where the NaCl will only have about 37, 38 grams of solute. So most definitely the sodium nitrate is more soluble, and the sodium chloride is less soluble. So the answer for this question would be sodium chloride. The third question, will 100 grams of potassium nitrate at 50 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water create a saturated solution, an unsaturated solution, or a supersaturated solution? So if we go to the 50 degrees Celsius line, and we take that line up to 100 grams of potassium nitrate, what we'll find is we have a point here and this is called a supersaturated situation because you have more solute than the 100 grams of water can dissolve because if we look at the actual curve for sodium nitrate it is below the point of 100 grams so what we do have is we have a saturated solution if we have 80 grams of the solute. This light blue line represents the saturated solution because the amount is, is directly on the curve. And the third dot, the dark blue dot, is the unsaturated solution because there's less solute than can be dissolved in the solution. And therefore, you could actually add more. So that would be an unsaturated solution. Let's look at our fourth and last example on this page. 10 grams of which substance will dissolve at 90 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to 90 degrees Celsius and run that line up to a curve that meets at the 10 gram amount and we notice that that curve fits the ammonia NH3 curve. So the answer to that last question is ammonia NH3. So let's try some of these problems on your own. So here is the first question, and we are looking at what mass of sodium chloride will dissolve at 90 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water. So what I'd like you to do is turn off the video, determine your solution, then when you're ready with an answer that you're satisfied with, go ahead and turn the video back on and check your answer. So let's see how you did. So we are looking at sodium chloride, so the sodium chloride line is this blue curve that runs through the middle. We're going to go to 90 degrees Celsius 
and the 90 degrees Celsius line is here. That will take us to this point right here. And if we run that back to the solute line, we see that it should be 40 grams of solute in 100 grams of water. So hopefully you did well on that. And let's move on to the next question. So this question says what mass of potassium nitrate will dissolve at 20 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water. So once again, turn off the video, check your answer, come up with a solution, and when you're satisfied with your answer, turn the video back on to see if you were correct. So how do you think you did? So let's check your answer, and what mass of potassium nitrate will dissolve at 20 degrees Celsius? So let's go to the 20 degrees Celsius line, and let's identify that curve. So here we have 20 degrees Celsius, and we're running it up to the potassium nitrate, which is this green curve, KNO3. So that would be this point right here. And this point right here matches up with 30 grams of solute. So 30 grams of potassium nitrate will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. Let's check the next question. What mass of potassium chromate will dissolve at 50 degrees Celsius in 200 grams of water? So once again, go through the, the curve, check the potassium chromate amount at 50 degrees Celsius. When you have uh, an acceptable answer, go ahead and turn the video back on and see how you did. So, let's check your answer. So at 50 degrees Celsius, that would be this line here. We're going to take it up to potassium chromate, which is K2Cr2O7. So that would be this curve right here running along the middle of the chart. And we're going to identify that point right here. And that again, as in the last problem, runs over to 30 grams of solute in 100 grams of water. But the catch here is, if we notice down here, we have 200 grams of water. And this chart is developed at 100 grams of water. So what we have to actually do is double that amount, because if we double the amount of water, that means we can double the amount of solute that will dissolve. And so for this case, the answer is actually 60 grams of solute. So number four, what temperature is necessary for 65 grams of lead nitrate to dissolve in 100 grams of water. So go ahead and turn off the video and when you turn off the video go ahead and work through the solution. When you have an answer that you're satisfied with, um, turn the video back on and check how you did. So let's check how you did. So we are looking at 65 grams of lead nitrate. So 65 grams would be about right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run that over to the lead nitrate line, which is PBNO32. And that would identify a point approximately right there on the curve. And to determine what temperature, we're going to go ahead and take that point and run it down to the x-axis. And we see that our answer should be 30 degrees Celsius for 65 grams of lead nitrate to dissolve in 100 grams of water. So what temperature is necessary for 10 grams of cerium sulfate to dissolve in 100 grams of water? So cerium sulfate is one of the gases, so this is the decay curve at the bottom. So go ahead and determine your answer. Uh, turn off the video or pause the video, and when you are ready with a solution, turn the video back on and check your answer for correctness. So let's see how you did. And basically at 10 grams of cerium sulfate, we're looking at this point right here. And that point right there coordinates with uh, 10 degrees Celsius. So that was pretty basic. So we should be dealing with 10 grams of cerium sulfate at 10 degrees Celsius if we have 100 grams of water. So let's try one more solution before we move on to other work in class. In 100 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius, with 50 grams of potassium chloride be saturated? Would it be unsaturated or supersaturated? 
So the 100 grams of water, we know that's the chart that we're dealing with. We're looking at 60 degrees Celsius, and so that point would be right here at 50 grams. Now what we notice is that point is above the KCL line. Since it is above the KCL line, that means you have too much solute, and so therefore this would be a super saturated solution. In order to be a saturated solution, you would probably need approximately 45 grams of the solute. So hopefully this was helpful in getting you to understand how to read solubility curves and how to interpret the data. And when you come to class, we will continue working on sol solutions and solubility. Thank you.